Hi everybody, welcome to the very first daily pattern. My name's Paul. Now, what you might not know about me is that I absolutely love reading trashy crime novels, particularly one set in Scotland. I don't know why that is. I've just got a, a theory that perhaps it's because it's uh, so far from where I live and that makes me feel safe. Anyway, the point is this, that when you're reading through those kind of novels, quite often you know exactly what's going to happen at the end because there's no mystery in it. There's no who done it. You're, you're absolutely clear. But just occasionally, when you read one of those books, um, you get to the end and you think, wow, that came out of nowhere. Just where did that twist come from? And so you end up flicking back through the book and then you see that the clues are there all along and you just kind of miss them. Actually, reading the Bible is pretty like that. You know, that, that and when we read through the Old and the New Testament, there are loads and loads of clues about what's going to happen at the end of the book. And John's Gospel is like that, but in miniature. So, today we're reading John chapter 1, verses 29 to 34. And in that bit of the Bible, um, uh, John the Baptist meets Jesus for the very first time and he claps eyes on him and he says two things about him which are significant. The first is that he says that, that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And that's a slightly weird thing for him to say because um, being a lamb actually refers to the end of the story. It refers to the fact that Jesus is going to be a sacrifice for us. And then the other thing that he says is that, that, that Jesus is the son of God. And that means he's going to be the Messiah. And the Messiah was like the rescuer that the Jewish people have been waiting for. So when you smash those two things together, you have Jesus, who is a rescuer, who is going to be sacrificed. And those things are like the clues that are planted at the beginning of the story so that we can uh, try and work out what's going to happen at the very end. And they're there right at the beginning, really, to give us a kind of a hope of what's going to happen. And that hope has a name and his name's Jesus. So we're at the beginning of a bunch of things at the moment, aren't we? New ways of doing, new ways of being. So today, let's be reminded of the hope that we have in Jesus. The hope of rescue and the hope that sin, fallenness, brokenness, actually sickness is dealt with by Jesus' sacrifice. But also, let me challenge you today. In what ways can we be more like Jesus, the sacrificial rescuer? How can we sacrifice our own comfort, energies, possessions for the benefit of others? Well, much love to you from all of us today.